66 million years ago, when the world map looked like this, when dinosaurs ruled the earth, massive volcanoes exploded. Dinosaurs died, but the western coast of India was born. And so were a group of small, lush green islands in the middle of nowhere. Mumbai is an old, old city. Humans have been living here since the Stone Age. Ashoka built a stupa here. The Greeks called it Heptanesia, which translated to a cluster of small islands, which is what Mumbai was and would remain so for the next 1600 years. The islands might have been in the middle of nowhere back then, but the folks living there had two advantages. One, an amazing harbour, and two, the art of making money. So no surprise that Egyptians, Romans, Persians all got on their boats and headed to the sweaty shores of Bombay before even Christ was born. Their favourite hangout? Nala Sapara. Yeah, true story that. Greeks followed these merchants and then Jewish merchants from Iraq came next. But to paraphrase Spider-Man, with shitloads of money comes shitloads of trouble. Every emperor worth his dynasty wanted to rule the city. So Mumbai changed hands, faster than a chocolate bar at a stoner party. Dynasties came and went. Then the Portuguese arrived in the 1500s. They saw what they liked, palm trees, nice beaches and a lot of money. So first things first, they called it Bombaya, or the Good Bay in Portuguese. Then they sent an army which beat the pulp out of the local sultan and took over the city in 1534. That's how the Gora rule of Mumbai started. Portuguese built some stunning churches and some okay okay forts. But over time, some other Goras landed up who were selling stuff. And the Portuguese gave the whole of Mumbai to the British King Charles II as dowry. Charles, equally bored of Mumbai, rented it to the East India Company. The rent? 10 pounds a year. Yeah, the whole of Mumbai was rented out for three bottles of Old Monk. Firkia, the East India Company were a bunch of assholes and they took over every Indian city and kingdom, one by one. By 1857, few Indian soldiers who worked for the company and a few local kings and queens said enough is enough, and they declared war on the British. It was a solid fight, one for the ages, but the company eventually won. To teach the local patriots a lesson, the company tied two soldiers, one Hindu and one Muslim, to a cannon and executed them. Independence would come almost 90 years later, but Mumbai kept going. Its ability to make money meant that the good stuff always came to Mumbai. Like the first passenger train in India, the country's first five-star hotel. Even the Lumiere brothers, who invented movies, turned up in India and premiered their films at the Watson Hotel in Mumbai. By the way, the Watson Hotel was where Mohammad Ali Jinnah, Pakistan's papa, would play pool. Today, Watson's looks like a booth bangla, but such is life. Independence came, Mumbai kept on making money and producing top-class cricketers. Buildings got taller, slums got more crowded, the sensex went up, quality of life went down. Blasts happened, so did floods. But Mumbai kept on going, and today, the seven islands are one city.